Hi everyone, my name is Grace Kemp and this is part two of a three-part series entitled The Coming End of Islam, or otherwise known as the Battle of Gog of Magog, based on Ezekiel 38 and 39. This army rises out of the ancient Assyrian Empire. I have lots of proof of that, we don't have time for the details here. But it rises from the ancient Assyrian Empire and the primary um, target of their attack is Israel. However, they attack Egypt first uh, because it, Egypt and Syria have been ancient enemies. Read Daniel 11 for details on that. Each, Israel at that time will be crowded with Jews. They've built up all over the land, it says, and they're dwelling in unwalled cities. It, apparently the peace agreement has required that they take down the walls and it seems like there's a, a peace in Israel for the first time in history, but it's a pseudo peace, it's a false peace. Uh, this army, however, disturbs that. The, the horse of Revelation, Revelation 6 and 4, the red horse takes peace from the earth, it says, and introduces war and bloodshed. And uh, the motive of this army is greed and opportunity, uh, as there's a massive army coming from the north, east, south, and west, um, heads for Egypt, but as they go through Israel, they take a spoil, it says, and they, they ransack wherever they go. How many would be in that army? The combined population of the countries of origin, that is Turkey, Iran, Libya, and northern Sudan, is 161 million. If 10% are in this army, that would be an army of 16 million. Now that seems like an absurd number, to be sure, but from the context, I think that is a fairly accurate guess. Uh, we know at the end of it, it takes the, the Jews, all of hundred, thousands and thousands of Jews working 24-7, seven, seven months to bury the dead. So you can just estimate the number of bodies that they have to take care of at the end of this horrible battle. We find that the weapons seem to be very primitive, horse and chariots and bows and arrows and spears and, and so forth, although they do have ships in the Mediterranean, says. Um, you can only speculate as to why they're so primitive. I am guessing that perhaps an electromagnetic pulse has been detonated in our atmosphere, way up where our satellites are. Uh, if that's the case, modern weaponry uh, would be um, unusable, and, uh, but the anger and hatred would still be there. In any case, it is, it's primitive by today's standards. Uh, they t attack I Egypt first. They likely come directly from Iran, crossing all the countries in between. They come from Libya in the west. They come from Ethiopia slash northern Sudan in the south. And they come uh, primarily from southeast Turkey and Syria area. Um, they all congregate in Egypt where they uh, take uh, the spoils, it said, and then the, the leader, Gog, he's the leader of this army, it says he hears troubling news out of the Northeast. Now what is that news? Uh, we don't, yes, well, it's not cl entirely clear, and there's a uh, difference of opinion, but I think it is clear from Daniel 11 that the news he hears is that the newly appointed king of the Jews, who is the biblical antichrist, has established his headquarters on the Temple Mount, um, and that infuriates him. Now, don't think the the um, Muslims are happy about the fact that the Jewish Temple is on the alongside their Dome of the Rock on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Now, uh, they're not happy about the uh, appointing a uh, uh, king of the Jews who is the biblical Antichrist, um, and they surely will not be happy that he has uh, put his headquarters. In, in the temple or in the courtyard of the temple. In any case, uh, his entire massive army leaves Israel, excuse me, leaves Egypt in an utter fury to head back to Jerusalem to set things straight. He said, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and to utterly take away many. So this massive army heads now from Egypt um, en route to Israel. And then there's a time of divine intervention Gog and his massive army ride furiously across the northern Sinai at Kadesh Barnea in the Israeli Negev disaster strikes. Uh, Kadesh Barnea is a well-known Bible 
name. Uh, it's just a ruins today, but uh, I think that's the very spot. Let me just read you a brief passage. I will turn thee back and will bring thee on the mountains of Israel. I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall on the mountains of Israel. Thou shalt shalt and all thy bands and the people with thee shall fall on the open field. He shall come to his end and none shall help him. When Gog, Gog shall come against Israel, my fury shall come up in the fire of my wrath, a great shaking in the land of Israel, fishes, fowls, beasts, all creeping things, all men on the face of the earth shall shake, mountains shall be thrown down, steep places fall, every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against him through all my mountains, every man's sword will be against his brother, pestilence, blood, rain on his bands and many people with them and overflowing rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone. I will send a fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. Now something catastrophic happens when this huge army uh, occupies the northern Sinai and the Negev of Israel. Um, we will try to explain that in a little more detail in part three, the last part of this series called The Coming End of Islam. Please join us and God bless you.